All right, everyone, welcome to another free webinar from Diesel Laptops. Uh, today, we're going to talk about diagnostic tools, and we're going to give a little history, and we're going to talk about which tools are good, which ones are bad, and the pros and cons on all of them. So first and foremost, this is our first time in this new booth at our, our new facility here in Emerald, South Carolina. So if we have some audio or video problems, just kind of hang on with us. We'll fix them and sort them out quick. I can also tell you we're recording this uh, via video live. There's about three Three cameras positioned on me right now. So as we're doing this thing, we'll actually be doing a YouTube recording this whole thing because we are going to be showing some of the tools on the video portion as well, which will be recorded. Once we get a little more advanced, my production crew tells me we'll be able to do this live next time and we can show you both the picture in picture and, and, and multiple angles. So that's coming next time. Um, as we're doing this, if you have any questions at all, put them in the chat. We also have some free software for you at the very end of the webinar, some codes that you can use to get free software. And we'll also give you a sneak peek on a brand new platform that the world has never seen. Um, and it has to do with truck parts. We, th we think it's something great and amazing. We spend a lot of time and money on it. So we'll show you what that is at the end. So who am I? I am the founder and CEO of Diesel Laptops. I have been around commercial trucks uh, for more than half my life. And I actually worked with my dad. He owns a concrete company, has trucks, and he, I've been around him for a long time. Let's just say that I've worked in dealerships. Um, and now I do this thing at Diesel Laptops. My contact information is on the screen. You're more than welcome to contact me through any of those means. Always happy to have a conversation with any of our customers. Uh, but I'm not doing this alone. So today I have someone else with me. So Stacy, go ahead and introduce yourself and let's talk about what you do here at Diesel Laptops. Yeah, so I'm Stacy Rodeball. I am the technical support and IT manager here. Um, I've helped build the tech support team. We have a staff of just about 30 people. They're made up of IT technicians and diesel techni technicians that are all certified. Um, our diesel techs specialize in different OEMs. Um, we've tried to make a, a well-rounded team to be able to support our customers as much as possible. Um, we've got multilingual technicians. We do Spanish, Portuguese, Japanese. Um, yeah, so Stacy's been with me since I started this thing at Diesel Laptops in my garage and dining room table. So she had the joy of, of working for me while my one and three year old were running around the place. And she's now in charge of this technical support team who literally gets tens and tens of thousands of calls every year on every diagnostic tool that you can possibly imagine. So we'll be having her give us a little insight on what she hears from her tech people and from customers when they're calling in on some of these tools. So first and foremost, let's do a quick little survey. So we're gonna pop a survey up on the screen here. And on the survey, we're basically gonna ask you to pick uh, as many of these as you want. Um, what do you look for in a diagnostic tool? Is it price? Is it support? Is it functionality? Is it ease of use? Is it repair information? What are, what's most important to you on, on what you would like to do here and what you would like to see? So the poll's open. We'll start having some people answer some of the poll questions here. Um, so hopefully our poll questions are coming in, I'm assuming production crew, right? So we're good to go with the results. All right, do we get the results to show up on the screen there for everyone or do they not pop up? There we go, right? So here's what people are looking for. This kind of gives you an idea with your fellow peers on what people are looking for. If you kind of break it down to the main categories and we're gonna talk about these categories as we go through this uh, presentation as well. So who is Diesel Laptops? So we're not an old company. We've been around for, it'll be our five year anniversary coming up here in March. We're in South Carolina. We have about 140 employees. We sell every diagnostic tool that exists. Well, at least the good ones. But we also have two people here full time that actually really test all these different tools to figure out how good or bad they are. And we'll talk about that in a second. We really consider ourselves an expert on diagnostic tools. Tools we make ourselves are not our best sellers. Our best sellers are actually other companies' tools because, frankly, they fit a better demographic for those particular things. So our job here at Diesel Laptops isn't to sell you one particular tool. It's to listen to your needs and figure out what you really need as a user to get into the right tool to take care of your functionality. So how do we do this? Uh, we do it a couple ways. So first of all, it's field testing. I just alluded to it. We have two people full-time that work here doing testing. One of them actually happens to be Stacy's husband, Tim. Yeah. 
So Tim's more on the marine side. He's uh, focused on marine, power sports, bikes, jet skis, all the fun toys that people have. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have another one, Travis. And if you watched your, one of our other webinars, you got to meet Travis a little bit. He is doing all of the off-highway testing, but he also does our truck testing as well. So what do we do in testing? Whenever there's a new software update, a new program, whether it's ours or somebody else's, Travis goes and Tim go out in the field and they figure out, A, does it work? And how good is this tool? And we take that information and we do videos, we do photos, we do write-ups, and we give that information inside of our company, both in the sales department and the tech support department. So we do that because we wanna know how good these tools are. There's always the marketing pitch, and then there's always, what does the tool actually do? So things to consider at a high level when you're looking at your tool, it's, it's really a lot of those survey questions you just answered. Uh, for example, what kind of equipment is covered? What kind of capabilities do you need? What kind of price range are you looking for? And the annual fees, are they optional? Are they required? How often do they come out? These are things you need to know because what I'm about to show you is this world's changing very, very quick. But before we talk about the future, Let's talk about how trucks got so complex just really quick. So those of you that have been around for a little bit, you know this really started in 2004, but it was really in about 1997 where there was an agreement signed with the US EPA, CARB, engine manufacturers, and there were some other parties. And they basically said, our engines are too dirty. We need to make them cleaner. So 2004 is when we saw EGR. That's when the real problem started. <laughs> 2007 is when we saw the diesel particulate filter. We also had the low sulfur diesel fuel that had to come to be in order to meet all those emission requirements. Then we had our SCR and DEF systems that were introduced in 2010. And in 2013, there was a little minor adjustment that many people didn't realize relating to emissions. And that's the requirement of an onboard diagnostics for emissions. So when I say that on board on a vehicle, it could be just warning indicator lights. It could actually be a dash panel that talks about the different codes that you're seeing. And we'll talk about some of the problems with that as well. Uh, but what you may not realize is that in 2016, the EPA and NHS, NHTSA, they got together and made a thing called the finalized phase two standards. And it has to do with more emission requirements that are going on from 2021 to 2027. And basically, they're not as concerned about uh, cutting the amount of emissions coming out of the engine. They still want to reduce emissions, but their whole thing is, well, if we get better fuel economy, then we won't have as many emissions. So now all the engine manufacturers have to increase fuel economy by 24% by the year 2027. And we'll talk about why that's important in a second. And there's also other things that are going on here. So this, what's happened here is all these emission requirements has basically meant that we've needed new technology on the engines. For those of you that run repair shops or work on fleets, you probably are quite aware of all of the issues that you're having with your emission systems. Right? It's a big part of what's going on. There's more components, they're more complex, there's additional fluids on the engine vehicle now, there's different oils than we had a couple of years ago, different fuels, it got a lot different. And what that's really driven with all these requirements is the whole alternative fuel and electric vehicle uh, thing that you're seeing now. So you see the headlines, uh, Lion, Tesla, Nikola, uh, Freightliner, all the traditional, those are the new ones, the traditional manufacturers such as Freightliner, Cummins, Volvo, Kenworth, Peterbilt, Navistar, these guys have all announced electric vehicles within the last 12 months as well, or even a little bit longer. So it's really getting complex really quick. And not to mention, it's about to get even more complex on some other fronts. So advanced driver assist systems. The term you'll hear a lot in the coming years, and maybe you already see it, is ADAS, which is the acronym for advanced driver assist systems. What do I mean by that? I mean by those things you may see in today's modern cars. Forward collision warning, lane departure warnings, automatic braking, basically these collision mitigation systems that are trying to improve safety. And it's a big push. In Europe, in 2016, it was made standard on every single vehicle, commercial vehicle in Europe. And I'm talking everything from a, a Sprinter van all the way up to the commercial things. So Europe's way ahead in this area. Some European companies like Volvo, they actually made collision warning mitigation systems standard on their equipment starting in 2018. So that doesn't mean necessarily every Volvo has it. It just means it's standard equipment when the dealer goes to build the order. The dealer can take it off to reduce the cost, obviously, which means at the end of the day, Volvo has said 40% now of all their on-highway trucks have advanced driver assist systems on them. And uh, these systems have more components, cameras, 
radar systems, in-cab displays, sensors, more wiring, more alerts, more chimes going off in the dash. We also have a change going on with the braking system. So those of you that are familiar with parking brakes, the old uh, ketchup and mustard valve, the air brakes, that's changed. Now Bendix has an electronic one that really gets more detailed. For example, you can't release your parking brake on the truck unless your seatbelt, the driver's seatbelt is clicked into the seat, into the seatbelt. So you're seeing these guys get more advanced and trying to put more safety features. You're gonna see a continuing push. And all this means is truck diagnostics are becoming more and more complex, right? Before we had an air system problem, now we have some electrical components involved in that system. There'll be more and more systems on trucks and the more and more systems you have means the more and more components, which means more and more failures you're gonna have, right? And at the end of the day, if you are a repair facility, this is a huge opportunity for you. If you can be the ones that really get out in front of it and understand it and have the right technology, the right diagnostic tools, the right training, the right resources to talk to, mm -hmm. you can really get ahead of everybody else out there and really be the one that understands that and help a lot of these customers that you're gonna start seeing come through your shops. At the end of the day, I'm gonna talk about diagnostic tools but it, it's really, I think I've seen a trend over the last couple of years. When I started this company four or five years ago, it was all about, I just need a diagnostic tool. And I think Stacey, you'd agree, it's quickly morphed into, that's one piece of the puzzle, but yeah. I really need support as, as, a, as a key piece of that. Yeah. So wh what kind of calls do you get in your support department with those 30 guys? We, we get calls anywhere from just trying to connect and use a tool to uh, more advanced troubleshooting and information like that. Yeah, I mean, people are buying tools, they're connecting to their data port, and they're not powering up. Right. right, and they don't know what to do or where to go or, or how to how to get around that. Um, they try to connect and it doesn't work. Well, mm -hmm. it could be the truck, it could be the tool, it could be the hardware. There's there's a lot of variables that go in there. And the other thing we've really found to be, to have that complete solution is you need a diagnostic tool, you need support, you need repair information, and we'll talk about that in a second. And you also need training, both on software, and I get it. We talk to customers every day. The independent aftermarket space doesn't get the training opportunities that franchise dealers do. And as things get more complex, they're gonna to have to figure it out or they're gonna be in big trouble when it comes to these repairs. So let's get it started getting a little bit granular. Let's talk about flash codes. So when we talk about tools reading codes, there's really two types of codes that exist. So if you're looking on the table here, um, and, and focus on the picture kind of on the far right, that one with the black background. That's a picture of an in-cab display from a uh, 2015 Kenworth T800. So as you remember, I told you all the manufacturers had to mandate that there was an onboard diagnostic system. So what does Packard do? They say, sure, we'll show you and give you a display in the cab of all your fault codes going on. However, the thing that Packard did here is they're showing you these SPN codes, if you can kind of read that out on the, on the far right. The problem with this is Packard doesn't use SPN codes. <laughs> they use P codes. And there is no way they've never given a translation table to anybody to say these ESPN and FMI codes translate to these proper P codes that we use to troubleshoot information. So even though someone says they can read codes for you, you wanna make sure it reads the right codes that are actually gonna help you. I can promise you, I hang out on a lot of Facebook groups with drivers and technicians. People every day are asking about Packard SPN codes and there is no way to figure out what those are. You can kind of try to figure it out by the description, but you're really shooting in the dark. And that picture kind of on the left, that's from another tool that does both. So in that case, you'll see there's a column called flash. And there's also a column called code and FMI. So in that particular tool, it's giving you both. It's saying, yeah, here's the flash code, the real code you need to fix that. But here's those generic SAE codes as well. All right, so we have a great blog post on our website. We talk about all kinds of SPN and MID and PID and FMI and what all those th things mean. Really encourage you to, to head to our blog.diesellaptops.com and just search for the word SAE and uh, you'll get a pretty good tutorial and some tables that you can look at to try to help figure that stuff out. So with all that said, um, let's talk about the very best diagnostic software that you could ever find on the market, right? And that's what the dealers have. They have their OEM software. 
Uh, the trend here was back in the day, a lot of these OEMs would outsource it to companies that specialized in that. And that trend's totally shifted now. There's only a handful of companies that actually outsource that software development. Uh, most of them have taken it back in-house and do it themselves. Um, but there's also some cons with the OEM software. So Stacy, we sell a lot of OEM software. What are some of the things you see people calling in for in tech support on the OEM software side? Yeah, so we get calls. Uh, the, the biggest pitfall we see is that people really aren't trained in how to use this software. Um, and, and, you know, we maintain technicians that are trained in how to use it, so they're able to guide our customers through it. Um, yeah, so I, I think one of the things is when you have 10 different pieces of OEM software on one laptop, mm -hmm. now you got 10 problems. Right. You, you have to figure out how to use 10 different pieces of software. And there's mm -hmm. a learning curve to any software. I don't care how easy and simple it is. You have 10 software licenses you need to manage now, right. right? And now if you have a shop with multiple computers, just start multiplying the numbers out and it gets pretty overwhelming pretty quick. Uh, we launched a, a training class. I, I thought this class would sell zero seats. And our trainers said, hey, we want to do a paid webinar uh, a four-hour webinar to teach people how to use Cummins Insight. And I'm like, who, who in their right minds would, would pay for that class? And literally 50 people signed up on the first email. Right away, yeah. Right? Because these things are deep. They are complex. They're made for dealers. They have training on them. They have resources to get help. And the general public typically doesn't get that. And there's a lot of things those things will do. But besides that, there's a couple other things that people need to be aware of. So let's just talk about if I did want to go buy... OEM software from everybody, what would it cost? And I have up on the screen table one of two that you're about to see for pricing for OEM software. And pay attention to the ones with stars next to them. So the ones that have the stars next to them, what that means is that does not include repair information. Um, Quasi does, right? Mac and Volvo, premium tech tool. There's a little bit of basic stuff, but all the good stuff's a totally different subscription package that you need to buy. Um, Cummins, yes, you can get troubleshooting information for your fault codes, but you're not going to get remove and replace instructions, torque specs, vehicle specs, all of those types of things. So as you go down that list, you can see what they cost to buy up front, and then you can also look and see the annual fees. Most OEMs have gone to required annual fees for their software, um, and they've, they've done that slowly but surely as time has kind of gone down here. All right? So what we have here is on page two is a couple more. So the ones on the first page were easy to get. The ones on the second page not so easy to get. So Cat ET, the only way to get Cat ET is literally call up your local cat dealer and ask them if they'll sell it to you. And most times they will not. It's really a decision dealer by dealer. Uh, the Packar MX software to do just the MX engines, no repair information. You can't change any engine parameters. Um, you kind of have like a, a, a neutered version of the dealer version of the Packar Davy software. It's $2,500 for the first year and $1,500 a year after that. Uh, Nissan UD, if you work on those small trucks, they have different software packages because Nissan UD has been bought and sold by a couple different companies through that period. So the point I'm trying to get across, yes, OEM is absolutely the best if you have unlimited budget and you got great resources, or if you only work on one or two engines, I'm probably buying OEM software. But for the vast majority of people, that's not what we're doing. So let's talk about the one I really want to encourage everybody to stay away from because we see it all the time. Mm -hmm. And I have an example listing up there on eBay. And what you'll find is people on eBay, Craigslist, all these other knockoff eBay sites, uh, Facebook forums, Facebook buy sell groups, offering to sell you a laptop for 1500 bucks. I've seen them up to $2,500 on full of pirated bootleg software. And it's gonna do everything you want it to do is the promise and you pay the money and they send it to you. So it can seem really expensive when you compare what I just showed you versus what the, the original pricing costs. Um, however, there are a couple cons. First and foremost, you're buying illegal pirated software. That, that's number one. Number two, you are taking some liability on. Certain OEM software programs, such as Cummins Insight, they do, do leave a footprint of every tool ever connected to it. I wouldn't want to be the guy that uses an illegal version of Cummins Insight, goes and modifies some parameters like road speed, and the car gets in an accident, and all of a sudden I'm enthralled in a, in a legal lawsuit of some type, right? So you have some exposure there. Uh, what you'll typically find is the software is several years behind. Um, in particular, 
uh, there's some that you can't even get because you have to be online to use them. And most of these programs are older versions. You can't update them. You can't get support. And you just don't know really what you're getting. And Stacey, what happens when someone has a pirated software program tool and the Windows operating system takes a, takes a brick and the computer's done? What, what, what happens to them then? I mean, they're out of luck. They're, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They, they got a paperweight on their desk, and there's no recourse and nothing to do. Yeah. Um, and I can tell you what we see in our tech support department is a lot of people calling in needing help just connecting mm -hmm. and updating, and they're not quite sure what to do. And, and people, I have no idea how people with these pirated laptops do anything or, or get by or are any efficient at their job. So, again, I really encourage you to stay away from that stuff. So... Let's talk about some Bluetooth readers. That's really the first entry level tool that we're seeing a lot of in the marketplace now. So these entry level tools, we have a couple of Bluetooth readers up there. Um, and for people that are watching the YouTube video later, they'll see a couple on the, on the screen here. So I have one from CanDo in my hand. I got this little guy from Nexic Technologies. Nexic is owned by Snap-on, by the way. We have the pack link up on the screen. These tools you're going to find anywhere in that $120 to $450 price range. What I can tell you is very few of these tools will actually properly read the real OEM flash codes. They'll usually give you the generic codes. It may get you by, it may get you through, um, but they are typically easily updatable by the internet. You download a new app on your, the app on the phone will say, hey, you have a firmware update. You click the button and it updates your device, it updates your hardware. Um, for the most part, these guys are all read only except for the can do. The can do will actually read codes uh, it'll read sensors, and it'll do DPF regens on a select few trucks. I can't remember which ones offhand. I think it's Cummins and Detroit to maybe International. Um, so there, there's some of the bigger ones that it does do. I can tell you there is a wave now coming of China version knockoffs of all the Bluetooth adapters. So that's coming right around the scene. These are also hard for us to support. Uh, when people call in and they can't get it connected or they don't know what to do, they call our tech support. Well, we can't easily remote into your phone. We, we do, I believe we do have the technology to do that if we, if we have to. Stacy, is yeah. that correct? Yep. Right. So we can remote on your phone and help you, but it, it's a really a hard thing for us to support. Just don't expect much except basic code reading. And hey, if you're just wanting to grab mileage off a vehicle or you're at a used truck auction or, or somewhere you just need to get the basic 101 stuff, probably not a bad tool to get done what you need to get done. So let's move up one more notch. All right. So one more notch up the up the totem pole here is handheld readers. So these are typically a little bit bigger devices. And again, for those on video, I'll kind of hold one up. I have the HD code, I'm sorry, it's the HD one from iCarsoft, but there's a lot of these that are out there. They range anywhere from 300 to $600. But there, there are a lot of gotchas here as well. Um, first of all, these are really hard to update. Uh, when I first started diesel laptops, I was trying to make the decision, like, I need to stock one. Which one do I stock? I ordered six different ones. I hooked them all up to the same truck, and they all gave me different results and different readings. And some read some things, some didn't. Um, at the end of the day, I went with the one that had the nice, pretty color display to, to sell customers if that's the one they wanted. Um, but again, don't, don't expect a lot of functionality here. Um, it is nicer in the fact you don't have to pair it up with a phone. You just plug it in and it self-powers itself up. There's no battery in it. And again, that can-do tool that you see there on the right-hand side, that one will do DPF regens on select engines. Um, there is one though in the middle there by Nexus um, called the NX Link. Uh, I think the part number is NXL102. Um, the box and the advertising states that it does DPF regens. And we had our testers here hook up to a dozen trucks and not a single one actually did a regen. Um, we actually put a video out kind of showing that tool and functionality. So again, when you start talking about regens and functionality at this level, it is really hit or miss on what tools will work and which ones won't. So let's talk about a new one on the market. Um, this is OTR Performance. These guys came out with a nice little tool. Um, it's this little tool you see on the left over there. Um, there's no display on it. There's no hookup to your computer. It is simply a tool that you take and you plug into your truck and there's no buttons on it. <laughs> and what it does is it will reset D rates and reset fault codes on your truck. So if you have a particular truck that's stuck in D rate or limp mode, and you just want to get it off the side of the road and get it somewhere to get fixed, it's a great little tool to just plug in and you wait two or three minutes and all the lights go off and it does that. 
However, the, the big thing on it is I see a lot of owner operators buying it, which I would too if I was an owner operator. You need to fix the problem. Right. So the big thing is with the emission systems is when they're derated or have uh, DEF or SCR problems, they're probably caused by something. <laughs> and if you just buy a tool and just kind of plug it in and, and get your truck going again, all you do is kick the can down the road again to the next problem. But OTR Performance does have a good tool for the right situation. All right, so let's kind of keep moving up in terms of functionality and what things can do. This product is a diesel laptop product. Um, this is actually the product that got deep, my company started when I was working part-time for somebody else. So we actually ended up buying the rights to this program about two years ago. And what PF Diagnose is, is first of all, it's a PC-based software program. You have to use it in conjunction with a, 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 a Nix, uh, RP1210 adapter, like a Nexic or a Drew Link, um, one of those types of things. And it's a universal read everything. So you can hook it up to any commercial truck. You can hook it up to automotive. You can hook it up to some uh, off-highway equipment. And it will read you all the codes. It will read you the live data. You can clear the codes. You can uh, run reports on it. And it's a good entry-level tool. Um, but this is the first time, Stacey, here we're talking about RP1210 devices. And, and for, for those of you listening, you're probably familiar with the Nexic USB link. Maybe the Noragon's got their DLA 2.0 plus. You have DG, DG Diagnostics has their DPA5 Pro out now. We have our diesel link. But those aren't the most simplest of tools, right? So we sell thousands of these things every year. What are some of the things that people call in to tech support for with some of these adapters? Yeah, see. I mean, connection issues is number one, right? Um, a lot of these are Bluetooth capable. Bluetooth can be really cumbersome. Um, if you're using the USB, you know, there's always driver updates. There's firmware updates. And these are all things that we're able to help support and, and get you back moving forward. Right. So now that we're getting a little more complex. We're not just into a plug and play. Now we got multiple pieces. We have a laptop. We got software like PF Diagnose. And we have that tool kind of in between. So things start to get a little more complicated as you kind of move up the chain here looking for more functionality. But as an entry level, I just want to read everything tool. That's the guy that we sell. Um, so this picture here is our universal kit. So we're taking that same software, we're giving you a laptop, we're giving you that RP1210 device, and we're basically giving you a kit ready to go out of the box. And we're also giving you DTC solutions, and we're also giving you some re, uh, access to our technical support department. So it's really an entry level kit. Uh, Stacy, explain to them what DTC, DTC Solutions is. DTC Solutions gives you, you, you know, your basic troubleshooting information. It may not provide you step by step, you know, walking you through it, but it's going to let you know what the code means and, and give you an idea of what direction you need to move in to make the repair. So I'm the CEO and founder of a company that sells diagnostic tools. Mm -hmm. My dad does not buy the best tool we have. My dad buys this tool because he runs a bunch of concrete trucks. He's got technicians. They just want to know the 101. What is it? Is it serious? Do, can I fix it or do I got to send it out to a dealer? So that's great, dad. You can, this is the tool for you. And obviously he, that's the one he runs in his shops um, and it works great for him. The advantage of this tool as well is there's a trade up package that we have. So customers can start here and they can get up to, well, anywhere between 80 and 100% of the value of that purchase over time as they want to move up to better tools. And that adapter works with OEM software. So mm -hmm. typically when a customer calls in and says, I have all Cummins engines, that's all I care about, what we typically say is great. Let's do the universal kit and add the Cummins OEM software because I know you're telling me just Cummins engines, but you probably have cab codes, transmission codes, ABS codes, right. maybe your personal pickup truck needs something. So it's a good kind of entry level tool for everybody. There is an add on you can buy it as well for another 300 bucks if you want to do regens on a couple model trucks. All right, so let's talk about the, the latest wave and craze going on with truck diagnostic tools that we are seeing pop up everywhere. And these are the China import tools, all right? So you will see these guys listed out in numerous ways. Um, for those watching the video, I have an F car in my hand, uh, but you also will see Matco selling a tool, Candu has theirs, Autel has theirs, um, Top Don has theirs, and there's, there's probably a couple more I, I didn't even realize or know about. Um, so what these China import tools are is, is first of all, they're going to be in that $2,500 to $3,500 price range. 
And they're going to be self-contained units, so they're, they're not on PCs. They come on a tablet that's touchscreen, and they give you the cables. Some are wireless, some are wired. And so, first of all, they are probably going to read pretty much anything you run across, pretty much. Uh, we did a pretty in-depth analysis last year where we went out with uh, the Autel tool and we went out with uh, OEM software and some of the upper end tools and really show people in detail the comparison between the tools. I would tell you these, these Chinese tools, when you look at them side by side by side by side by side, they are about 99, 95, 99% exactly the same. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, even like the terminology and the words inside of it. So, you know, as, as everyone knows, you know, China's good about IP infringement and copying things and making knockoffs. Truck diagnostic tools are really no different. So while the tablet may look different, a lot of times the underlying technology inside of it is pretty much the same across all of them. One might be a little bit better than the other here and there. Um, they all have lifetime licenses. They're, they're never going to expire. Updates when you get them, um, some update more than others. And they may be good updates. They may not. Um, you'll notice a lot of uh, truck models listed in these guys that really aren't even um, in the U.S. or North America. Um, so there's a lot of that going on. We find quite often when we run commands on things, they don't work. Um, they'll say, hey, we have coverage on um, off-highway engines for a certain manufacturer. And, well, they do, only if it has a Cummins engine, and that particular manufacturer made one Cummins engine of the 100 models over the last 20 years, right? So there's a lot of uh, kind of misdirection and, and bad information out there on these things. If you buy one of these and it works for you, it's probably working great on a couple like uh, Isuzu, Hino, all the, all the UD Nissan, all those kind of import trucks are coming in. Um, but, Stacey, we don't, we don't sell a lot of these things. Um, what the ones we do? What what kind of what do you see in tech support from customers? Are they are they happy with them? Are they not happy? Where, where does it usually end up when somebody buys one of these? Yeah, generally they're not they're not overly happy with it. Um, when they get it, it it takes a little bit to try to figure out. I mean, you're just there's no guide in how to use these things, right? So they're hooking up. They're you know trying to figure out how to connect. They call into us for support. It's a really tough thing to support. You know, for us, there's nobody for us to call and and ask questions to, and and we can't remote into these things and see what you're seeing. So it just really makes things difficult. Yeah. So they run custom Android software, and sometimes we can sideload stuff. Sometimes we can't. Um, it's, it's just a really difficult position from the support side, the training side. And, you know, in, in my estimation, if you buy one of these things, it's going to work about 60 to 70 percent of the time. Yeah. But now you just spent, you know, upwards of three grand, maybe more, and yeah. you're not quite all the way there. Um, but again, certain certain pockets, certain model trucks and certain model years works great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, other ones, you're just going to be struggling. And I, I'd really be cautious of buying these if you're working on any newer model trucks at all. And when I say newer models, the last three or four years of model trucks. Yep. Um, so just keep that in mind with those tools in particular. Um, and there's a lot of rebranding going on here too. So um, some of these companies you see up there, they don't actually make the tool. They just go license the information from another Chinese company, put their name on it, and then they go sell the tool. So let's talk about JPro by Noragon. So most people have heard about JPro by Noragon. Um, they've gone through several iterations. Before, you used to pay this big money up front. You could buy different modules. They really shifted about two years ago to say, okay, forget that. Now just buy our software package and just pay us a annual fee or a monthly fee if you're big enough to go direct with them. So it is a universal read everything. Uh, it does read things very quickly. It is easy to use. It does give you OEM flash codes and aftermarket codes. Um, there are some bi-directional commands. So where this tool fits really good typically is bigger fleets that say, look, we don't want to get in depth. We don't want to change all these crazy parameters in the engine. We don't need to run all the tests that are available to us. We're okay just doing this. So for example, when I go connect to a Cummins engine with this tool, with JPro, I can do about 12 commands. I go do this with uh, one of the higher end tools that we're going to show you. There's over 100. So there's a big difference there between those. And there are some things that the JPro tool won't do 
that um, you probably need to do. So first of all, with Caterpillar, 100% read only. Allison Transmissions, 100% read only. Um, I know we got something up there about Paccar. They did add a couple functionality commands, I think two or three for Paccar. And they got some Isuzu and Fuso functions in there as well. But it, it's one of those tools where you're perpetually paying a license for. Um, you can go buy at OEM software and add on to it, but you're really getting what you pay for. The other kind of gotcha with this one is, um, Unless you use their adapter, that green one on the screen, it will not work on the automotive side. So if you're trying to use a Nexic adapter, a G DG adapter, anybody else's adapter, don't expect anything with an OBD2 port to actually work with the program. And again, you're going to pay every year. About $1,500 is the retail price. So they charge five grand for a complete kit with a laptop, software, hardware. And we, we resell this, this tool as well. Um, but then their repair information is another $1,500 a year, give or take. So if you really look at it, you're paying three grand a year to rent software to get your repair information and to get diagnostics. And when you start adding that up over time, it gets to be a pretty expensive thing that you're looking at. So let's talk about um, some another tool that's got more functionality. Um, so usually I, I do this thing, and you know my friends at Snap On send me a nice letter, you know, once in a while, <laughs> asking me not to say certain things. But in, in this case, um, this is the the ProLink IQ made by Snap On, um, and it's actually made by Nexic. Nexic had the first iteration of this called the uh, Nexic ProLink. And they, it used to be blue, and they stopped selling it a couple years back, and it went solely through the, the, the Snap-on mobile trucks is where you find this tool now. So their Ultra Heavy Duty um, is sold as a starter kit. So the starter kit is the tablet, and they'll give you some basic read-only software. But then if you want functionality to do the advanced tools, now we're talking about having to buy the individual software package for each of those. And you're looking at, if you go on Snap-on's website and just look for the Snap-on ProLink Ultra Heavy Duty, the entire kit with every module they have is almost $16,000. So it's a very expensive tool. And I can tell you that there are a lot of coverage gaps in it as well. We have a couple of them here. We took some trade-ins from some customers. We evaluate them. We test them. Um, you're not going to find a lot of the commands and functionality that you're looking for. Furthermore, you have no idea how often updates come out or how much they cost, and they can easily run into thousands. I mean, each update, say you buy the new Cummins one, it's still you know five hundred to a thousand dollars to get that Cummins updated software. And then we also have the fact that there's no repair information. So if you want to buy the repair information, you do need to pay extra for that as well. So this is a really expensive tool that really can eat you alive with repair costs, uh, ongoing costs, maintenance costs, update costs, and uh, the repair information being completely separate. So we'll move up a level. And again, we're going by functionality here. We're not going by, by pricing. And this is the diesel laptop fleet and triage tool. So this is a, a deal we do through, uh, through Texa. So this tool here, it comes on a little tablet. Um, it is Windows based. It's not uh, Android based. So we can put TeamViewer on there and log me in and all these other things we use to support you to remote into it. It uses the same piece of hardware. That's that TXT box that you see there up on the screen. So the TXT box, um, this is one box that Texi uses that covers truck, off-highway, marine, power sports, automotive, everything. And we really only sell this one on this 8-inch tablet that's included. So this tool is going to run you about four grand, And this tablet works on all diesels, F250 and up. Um, but it does have some limitations, correct, Stacey? Yep. So what are some of the limitations that you would expect this tool to not be able to do compared to kind of the upper end stuff? So it's going to run your, your basic functions, like your regens, some of your cutout tests, some of those things. Um, but when you get uh, more in-depth, like calibrating a turbo, um, that's where you're going you're gonna to see the... Yep. So what it won't do is programming events. And right. we kind of classify VGT actuator calibrations and installation commands, injector programming events. Um, you know, there's, there's hundreds of parameters you can change on the engine with their upper end tool. This one can really only do cruise and road speed. Yeah. Um, but again, for people that just want an entry level tool with a lifetime license that never expires mm -hmm. and they want to do the 101 basic stuff, 
it's a good tool to get them started. And we do, again, kind of have an upgrade path here at Diesel Laptops that our sales team you know, can talk to you about. You can find that information on our, our website. That allows you to get 80 to 100% of the trade-in value if you end up buying that tool and finding out you need more. So we'll move up one more notch in the entire truck world of diagnostics. And this tool made a big splash about four years ago, maybe five. And this is the Bosch ESI truck. So there, the, first of all, this is again a self-contained system, but it does run Windows. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you the hardware, when I took one of these apart, I was not impressed. It was using a mechanical spinning hard drive, which are prone to failure. Why they didn't put a solid state drive in it to speed it up and give more reliability, I don't know. Um, the adapter itself, um, not a big, not a big fan of this guy. I mean, I can literally, I'm doing this on a video, but I can sit here and I can squeeze it and kind of, I could think I could break this in half fairly easy. Um, the ones we did sell, we had a lot of failures of the hardware itself from people drop on them or the plugs or the ports breaking on them. So it's, it's not a overly super rugged box. The tablet itself is rugged. Um, but here's the deal guys. Bosch doesn't make the diagnostic software for this tool. This is a 100% rebranded tool from Kajali. So Kajali, they do make good software. I'm not going to dig them on that at all. However, the Bosch unit is somewhere between one to two updates behind. And Kajali does their updates every three months. So best case scenario, this tool is three months behind in updates. Worst case is it's about six months behind. Uh, you'll find out that um, part of the part of the, I think the struggle with diagnostic tools in the traditional distribution chain is that you have a manufacturer who sells it to a dealer who sells it to an end user. And Bosch, you can buy these tools from AutoZone, Napa, O'Reilly's, all over the internet, eBay, Amazon. And what ends up happening is when you talk to someone that doesn't really know what these do, they really tend to oversell it a lot. Um, and that's one of the, kind of the, the digs on it. And the other, the other interesting thing here is that Bosch resold or repackaged this tool yet again for Mac tools. So if you were talking to your Mac tool guy about a diagnostic tool, you're actually buying a Bosch tool that's actually a Kajali tool, and you're paying those small markups all along the way. I would just skip all that and just go right to the Kajali tool is probably where I would end up. Um, but another advantage of this tool is this, this adapter here that I was showing kind of on the video. It's not on the, the PowerPoint. This thing's RP1210 compliant, so that means you can use their adapter with other software. However, we've had not so good luck with it. Because we're not sure why, but we find we have a lot of connection issues and slowness issues. You know, I don't think that was super the intention to make this an RP1210. It was kind of like an afterthought maybe. I don't know. Um, but it, it, you know, it is what it is. Repair information is also not included with the Bosch or the Mac Tools tool. So they'll give you to free, I think, for 30 days. After that, it doesn't work, and you need to pay another fee for the repair information, which is about $1,200 a year. Mm -hmm. So this tool also has required annual fees to keep working. So if your tool stops working um, after a year, is what, should, what happens, um, you essentially have a paperweight. So th my problem with this tool is I paid $8,500 for it. I had it for a year. And now it's a paperweight unless I pay them 1500 bucks to keep it working and I do another $1,200 a year. So now I have a shop owner or I have somebody that just bought one of these tools yeah. and they are now responsible for installation, firmware updates, configuring the Bluetooth, pairing the Bluetooth, yeah. all those things. Um, and I can tell you our production department who does tools all day long, mm -hmm. one of these Bosch tools takes them about two days to do because of waiting for license codes and all these things. So it's not a great first experience either typically for people when they get right. these. Calling into Bosch is a little bit of a struggle sometimes, getting to the right person and getting the help that you need. Right. I mean, Bosch is a huge company. They're selling wiper blades, injectors, diagnostic tools, fuel pumps, all kinds of things. Right. And I do agree when you when you call them for tech support, it's kind of, you can tell they're going through a script, right? They're just, they're just going down the list, making you check all the boxes before they can actually help you. And a lot of those people, I don't think, are really qualified to help on the diagnostic right. tool side. The odds of getting transferred about six times are... Really likely. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know if it's like there now, but I remember when I was selling these things three years ago, I called into tech support once. Mm -hmm. Literally took me an hour and 10 minutes on hold before someone actually got to me that could help me right. fix, the, you know, fix the issue I'd go and ask my question. 
All right, so next up we have the Jaw Test by Kajali. And I'm gonna tell you guys, there's, there's two main tools here. So let's call them 1A and 1B, and I, I really don't care which order you put them in here, and we'll show you the differences between them. So let's talk about the Jaw Test by Kajali first. We sell an entire kit with our laptop for about $7,500. And on the video, I got kind of the, 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 the tool up here, the, the physical part of it. This is a rugged, if you compare this to the Bosch one, Right. Yeah, I mean, this thing is rugged as all get out. It's tough. It's it, it's very durable. Um, their software is very, very easy to use. Uh, I can tell you they have a very large staff in the United States. Kajali is a Spanish company, but they have a strong presence over here in the U.S. Um, Stacey, you've worked with multiple people on their tech support team through different things over there. Um, how's the response with them when you call in and have an issue and, and need a question with the guys over at Kajali? I mean, we can get somebody on the phone right away, and, then, and they start troubleshooting right with us. They'll remote into the laptops. They'll they'll hop right on board with us. Yeah, there, there's no lag or wait time on the support side of things at all. Uh, those guys are all knowledgeable. They actually all know the tool. They're not reading off a script. You can tell they're well trained and they know what they're doing. Um, you know, so it's a great tool functionality wise. I'm going to put it right on par with the next one we're about to show, which is Texa. Um, so there's some differences between them. So for example, if you have a Kajali tool doing truck or off highway and you want to add the marine module and they have a great marine platform you can't do it with this you have to buy a separate piece of hardware they haven't fully integrated everything yet this tool does have required annual fees so this tool yes you do have to pay a fee every year if you want to keep keep it active and keep it working um, so that is kind of one of those things as well however they do do a great job with updates they do a great job with support they do have an additional uh, integrated repair information that you can buy for about another seven hundred dollars a year um, so overall functionality wise they are right on par with these guys over here at Texa. So uh, Texa, again, will kind of bring over the box on the video to show people it's the same one as the fleet and triage tool. So we have sold a lot of these guys. <laughs> um, I, think we're, I think we're approaching 10,000 of these things sold in the last couple of years. And it's a great tool. Functionality-wise, there's going to be a couple little things Kajali does better. A couple little things Texa does better, mm -hmm. um, but at the main point, they're they're pretty much even on the functionality. And you know, really, Stacey, in your opinion, it would it be fair if I said these are going to do essentially ninety nine percent of OEM commands. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so there's not a lot that you'll find OEM software can do that these can't do. And both companies actively want to know <laughs> what's missing so that they can put it in there and kind of keep one up in their competitors. Um, the advantage with the Texa tool is, first of all, you have a little bit cheaper price point up front. It's about 500 bucks cheaper. It's about seven grand. But you have no required annual fees. Right. So, Stacey, what happens after a year um, if the customer, you know, they bought the tool, a year goes by, they don't pay a fee? Uh, what happens at that point? Yeah, so when that happens, you have all the same functionality that you had at the time that your license expired. Uh, you don't you don't lose anything from the software functionality. Uh, you just don't get anything new. You're not eligible for updates, and you're not eligible for support. Right. So you know, Texa, they're Italian based. They they do have a presence here in the U.S. They have an office up in New Jersey. However, you kind of look at Kajali, they got, I don't know, 20, 30 guys, gals there. Texa, I think, has three, maybe four. Um, so it's a different model. K Kajali's there to support the end user directly. Texas model isn't that. It's really to let the distributor, the dealer, such as diesel laptops, to support the customers. And they're kind of there on the back end to when we raise our hand to give them assistance. Um, I will say they do probably, they do way more updates than Kajali. Absolutely. <laughs> right? So explain kind of their release mentality with the major minor updates and how they, how they do that. Yeah, so the major updates come out about three times a year. Uh, the minor updates, they come out as needed. So when we report uh, functionality that we feel like needs to be developed and we get that information directly from the customer, um, we'll send log files to Texa. They're very responsive in developing the functionality that we're looking for. And if it's something small and just easy to modify, they send out patch updates. I mean, you can get that as often as, you know, every month. Uh, they, they release it as needed. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're pretty quick with them and they're all internet based and the program prompts you, hey, there's an update. Um, the other thing I'll say is the Kajali box itself is RP1210 compliant. And that box actually works really well with OEM software. So you can buy the Kajali tool and still put your Cummins Insight and have one hardware platform that you're using. The Texas side of it, this is not RP1210 compliant. So if you buy a Texas unit and you want Cummins Insight, 
You also need to have an RP1210 device like the Nexic USB link or diesel link or whatever it is. Um, and just keep in mind, you know, these guys are these guys are great at Texo. They're great at Kajali. Um, but you'll never have 100% coverage on everything you want to do. And we'll, we'll talk about that here in a little bit um, on what I mean by that. And a lot of those things are things that are really locked by the manufacturer due to, due to ECM programming needs. So we'll talk about that here in a second. So the other kind of advantage that Texa has right now is they have this e-truck module. So it's this cool little tool. You can see it down there in the bottom right. It's an OBD2 connector, um, but they do sell cables to convert from OBD2 and 9-pin. So I have them, again, for people to watch the YouTube video later, uh, you'll be able to see them on the screen here. They're, they're pretty tiny, right? Like about the size of my thumb. Yep. And essentially what you would do is you would plug this into the truck and it has to pair with a internet enabled device in the cab. So it could be the driver's cell phone, could be a tablet that's mounted in there, whatever it is. And as the truck's driving around, it's sending all that data to home base for Texa. And Texa gives you access to a portal. So this is not a telematic device. This is not an ELD, it is a diagnostic tool. So what that means is you as the owner of equipment, if you have trucks running around out there, you can obviously see what they have going on out in the field. However, you can do something else. You can run DPF regens remotely from that truck. So if your driver's 2,000 miles away and he needs a regen, you're able to initiate that from your portal um, that you're sitting at, at your desk. Granted, you do need the driver's assistance, make sure the truck's in park and in the, it's in, um, sorry, it's in neutral, parking brakes on, all those things that need to be set to do a DPF regen. Um, you have to buy these little e-truck modules in packs of five. Um, I want to say a five pack is about 1300 bucks. So that comes out to be about 250, 300 bucks each. Um, and again, you do have to have an internet enabled device in the cab, but the licensing fees for these, there are some, but they're really minimal. I'm talking a couple bucks a year per device. It's, it's, it's a really minimal thing uh, that they have going on. Um, so it's a, it is a great little tool e-truck. Yeah. Um, and we'll see you know, where the market uh, brings that whole guy. So, Stacy, you know we've sold a lot of the the, the Texa product. Mm -hmm. What are what are some of the some of the negatives or some of the some of the issues you may see customers calling in or or, or having problems with? Yeah, I mean, just like every tool, the most common thing we we get calls about are connecting. <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, they're Bluetooth enabled. You can do it, um, you know, hardwired. But that's that's the most common thing we troubleshoot. And then beyond that, it becomes uh, a lot more granular because the, the products are really easy to use. Yeah. So like some of those granular things that we see is um, there was a certain model year of Detroit Diesel where you had to you had to calibrate or program the turbo actuator. Well, the only way to do it with OEM software was actually to program the ECM to a test ECM, then do the event, and then program it back to the true information on that ECM. So there, there's a lot of weird things out there in the industry that you need to do uh, in order to change parameters. So for example, there's things Texas will do that even OEM software that you can buy can't do. <laughs> so for example, if you have PACCAR engines and you want to change your road speed and you buy the PACCAR Davy software, you can't do it. Because with PACCAR, you have to go on PACCAR's portal, yes. pull up your VIN, change your road speed, go back to your tool and flash the entire ECM, which is not a quick process. And because you bought the Davy software it does not mean you get access to their portal to do those things. They kind of reserve that for dealer only typically. However, with Texa, you actually can change the road speed on these things because they figured out a way to go around that and not have to use that same procedure. So it all really depends on what you're doing as a company and what you're looking for. And up on the screen now, I kind of have a, a comparison on a bunch of different things between the two of them. So the things to kind of keep in mind here is the upfront price, uh, the renewals, um, some are optional with Texa. Uh, they're all optional with Texa. Some are, they're all required with Kajali. Um, we're going to talk about information you get when you buy a product from diesel laptops in a second. We include that with both kits. Uh, Texa, I put not available for integrated repair information. They do have some. It's just really weak. There's not a lot of meat there to it. So we don't. Sparse. We, it's sparse of yeah. the of the units we sold. We've never actually sold the repair information from Texa. Um, could we just talked about the remote capability with Texa? Kajali has theirs coming out. Um, I, you know, then I try to like, give my opinion and, and kind of the market's opinion on some things. I actually find Texa really easy to use, but when we tend to show it both platforms to brand new customers, they tend to pick up the Kajali interface easier. 
And I think it's more than anything that the connection process is much easier with Kajali, mm -hmm. right? So Kajali, it's essentially click a button and you connect. <laughs> Right. With Texa, you kind of got to say, okay, I got a, I got a Freightliner with a Cummins engine, and then I connect. So it's just a little different methodology that they have going on in the whole thing. Uh, Kajali does have some other features. They have one called Shop Management. So basically, if you have multiple units of Kajali and multiple shops, you can actually centralize all that information into one dashboard where you can see what's going on through your entire organization. Functionality, I put them right on par with each other. I'm not going to nitpick the little differences between the two of them. Um, um, and it's really a cat and mouse game, and they're really updating so fast. It, it's really kind of an irrelevant thing at this point. Right. And, and to be honest, both companies, to me, have really stopped even putting a lot of resources into building out the truck uh, functionality because it's done. Yeah. <laughs> so all they're worried about is new model trucks or the random stuff that comes in, and they've really both focused more towards the off-highway diagnostic development market. Mm -hmm. Um, and then support, I'll give Kajali the leg up on support there as well. If you're talking about needing OEM support from either Kajali or Texa, however, when you buy from diesel laptops, you really don't need either of them. All right. So at the end of the day, um, if you're interested in an all makes dealer level kit, uh, we do a couple things here at Diesel Laptops, and these are really the two premium brands, the Texa and Kajali. They're both ready to go out of the box. We have a whole production department here that installs, configures, licenses, tests, does everything to make sure they're good to go. We do a 30-day money-back guarantee. That's right. You buy the tool, you have it for 30 days, you don't like it, send it back. We'll give you a full refund or we'll swap you out, whatever you'd prefer. Uh, we have US-based technical support, as Stacy was talking about, and we have a bunch of other accessories available as well. So uh, I got Danielle here in the background. We're going to do one more quick survey, and then we'll kind of wrap this thing up here and, and kind of show you guys a couple other things and give you some of those free software codes. So What's your biggest challenge in the diagnostic process? Uh, go ahead and pick all that apply. Um, where, where do you feel or where do you see your challenge um, as a shop owner, shop manager, diesel technician, or mobile technician, whoever you happen to be? Um, Danielle, we got, hopefully we got some results kind of rolling in through here. All right. So we'll pop them up on the screen. And it really comes down to, uh, it looks like lack of training and lack of repair information. That's really the things that people are looking for. I can tell you that's great because those are the things we've invested millions of dollars in the, that's right. <laughs> the last couple of years. Um, so let's talk about a couple of those a little bit, if you can give a control back to me. Um, so let's talk about training and support. Those happen to be the top two answers on the survey. Uh, so we do live webinars weekly. Uh, we have a we have a staff of trainers here. They're all ex diesel technicians. These are not educators talking about theory. They're talking about practicality. Uh, we do one on one training if needed. We actually have training centers now that we've launched. We have a training center here in South Carolina. In the last six months, we've launched Pompano Beach, Florida, Kansas City, Missouri, and Columbus, Ohio. I can tell you, we'll be on the West Coast very very shortly in a partnership uh, with Diesel Emission Services. Uh, we'll be in Cincinnati, Ohio as well, and we'll be in probably about 15 to 20 cities by this time next year. So these are actual classes you can go to on how to use software, how to troubleshoot after treatment systems, how to do electrical diagnostics, how to do max force diagnostics, all these courses that we're launching. We're excited about that. Um, Stacy, again, just give them a quick overview on your hours and support and, and that whole deal. Yeah, so our support team is available Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 Eastern Standard Time, 8 to 4 on Saturdays. Uh, we have uh, English speaking, Spanish speaking, Japanese, Portuguese. Um, and then our support team is made up of certified IT technicians, certified diesel technicians. Um, and, we, and we try to make sure we hire people with personality, you know, so you can enjoy who you're talking to while you're getting the help yeah. that you need. And we, that's a department we, we, I think we struggled in before getting staffed up quick enough <laughs> based on the demand. Um, it, it's hard for us to find someone and get them trained and get them able to help a customer. I think we're ahead of it now a little bit. Uh, I know we have a great HR department trying to find more. Yep. So it's one of those focuses we're, we're really focused on. Diesel Laptop University. University, that's our online training courses. Everyone that buys a kit gets at least one free course to try that platform out. Uh, we talked about DTC Solutions Truck. We have a, another program. And these are offline programs, by the way, folks. So you don't need to be on the internet in order to access the repair information. We realize a lot of people don't have great service everywhere. Um, so we have one for truck, one for off-highway. Those are included with the kits. We have knowledge base. We have an entire department here, uh, well north of 50 people now, just building repair information. Step-by-step uh, -step directions, torque specs, wiring schematics, component locators, vehicle specs, maintenance intervals, 
uh, all these things you need to do. And we kind of dump all that into this program called Knowledge Base on the laptops. There's optional programs. We have a we have a program you can buy. It's not that expensive. I think it's like 40 bucks a year where we actually put software on your computer that does GPS tracking. If your computer's lost or stolen, it'll remotely lock it down and mm-hmm. send alerts to law enforcement and all those kinds of crazy things. Um, customers that buy from us, they get a free listing for a year, a premier listing on fleetpal.io, which is a breakdown service. We have some free software we've made called AllScan, which is a way to generate uh, health reports for your clients that work through these things. We have labor time guide software we include that includes estimating. Um, we just launched a free website called www.trucklabortimes.com. I'll give that a quick plug. You can look up labor times for free on that website. Um, and then we have a tool that does parts cross-referencing. We have tools and mobile apps that do fault codes. Um, we have all these things. And then, of course, we sell all kinds of accessories, rugged cases. We can put uh, our diesel laptop LTE network right on your laptop as well. We are a dealer for Gamber Johnson for mounting systems for in-cabs and in-shops and, and all those things. Um, the other thing when I talked about earlier is there's always things you're not going to be able to do with an aftermarket tool. And... What we do here at Diesel Laptops is we have these remote programming kits. So uh, what this is, is there's certain situations where you need to program something and we can't do it with aftermarket. Um, Yeah, you could probably go buy it, but it's so expensive to do one programming event doesn't make sense. So it's actually a rental program where customers can call in. Um, And Stacey, your team actually does the programming event for them. Am I correct in that? Yeah. Yeah. They're trained in how to use the software and how to safely program, you know, your, your trucks. Yeah, we found a lot of people don't know how to program safely. They don't know to pull fuses or go direct to ECMs, and we include breakout harnesses, and we do backups of the ECMs, and we do all those things to make sure when that event does happen, we're doing it for you, mm-hmm. and it's going to be done properly. Um, so here you go. Free stuff from diesel laptops, right? My favorite thing, giveaway stuff. That is Tyler's um, favorite thing. Yes. I, I, every time <laughs> I make something new, I give it away for free. Um, so first of all, truckfaultcodes.com or just look for truck fault codes on the, the Google Play Store or the Apple iTunes Store. Sign up. Um, it'll tell you every fault code that exists. It'll tell you how to fix the fault codes. And the paid portion of that is step-by-step troubleshooting guides, wiring diagrams, component locators. Um, if you use that code, and you have to do it on the website, so go to truckfaultcodes.com, sign up with that coupon code. You'll get a free year of that entire platform, all the premium memberships, and you'll be able to access it all on your mobile device as well. Uh, truck Parts Cross, we, I can tell you we have a huge play in the truck parts world. Truck Parts Cross is our free tool that allows anyone to cross-reference OEM and aftermarket part numbers. Um, it's a great database. It's on multiple platforms. Um, and I'll just give you a sneak peek here on the last slide on what's coming next for that. We have Dieselvin, uh, dieselvin.com. We have the mobile apps. Do Divinda coding, show you what engine you have in trucks, all the equipment on them. And then we launched trucklabortimes.com literally two weeks ago. So trucklabortimes.com, free version. You can look up two labor operations a month for free. However, if you sign up with that coupon code, we'll give you a free year of as many lookups as you want. Mobile apps are in development, and we will also allow people to create full-blown estimates on that platform here very shortly as well. Um, So the sneak peek that I wanted to show everybody is truckpartslookup.com. So if you want to go check it out, it's actually open to everybody right now. Uh, We're going to make it a public open beta. But what this is, is the biggest struggle that we see at Diesel Laptops is that when someone needs a truck part, they're forced to call their dealer with an engine serial number or VIN number or model. And we believe, and I believe, people would rather look up their own truck parts than have to call somebody. So on this platform, you can literally pick, I have a Kenworth 2016 T680, and you will be able to see a complete breakdown through an exploded parts view. You'll be able to see the OEM number. And if you click the OEM number, you can cross it to everybody else in the aftermarket instantly as well. So this is a tool that's in development. We spent a lot of money, a lot of time building it. So we'll see how this goes here through this whole thing. So uh, I think we're going to switch inputs on our our little cheater television here and see if we have any questions that you want to ask. If you guys have questions as well, um, feel free to do it. We also announced we're going to have a winner, a one of the one of the attendees, a free fifty dollar Amazon gift card. So congratulations to Lawrence Jones for getting the free gift card. Uh, we should have your contact information. We will be sending you an email with your free fifty dollar gift card. Uh, so I'm going to answer a couple questions here um, as we see up on the screen. 
right? So what is the difference in changing parameters versus reprogramming? You know what, that is a very good question because I use a certain terminology versus uh -huh. what other people use. Okay. So I'll tell you my terminology for the person that asked this question. Reprogramming is updating an ECM to a completely new calibration level mm -hmm. or getting a blank ECM and having to program it. So those top tier tools you saw, uh, will they program injectors? Yes. Can you change parameters like road speed, cruise speed, PTO settings, idle shutdown timers, and a plethora of others? Absolutely. It's, all, it's actually almost overwhelming how many parameters you can change on some oh, of yeah. those engines. Um, so like Cummins, an example, there's multiple, you know, vehicle speed, cruise speed, road speed, throttle speed. There's a lot of that that you kind of need to know, and our tech team here is experienced in helping you those. So that's the difference. Changing parameters is the settings on the truck, um, reprogramming is completely reflashing the ECM. Um, so another question came up here. What can a dealer, say John Deere, do <laughs> that your product cannot? Um, Stacey, you want to take a first stab at that at that question to try to try to answer that one, or you want me to get that I'm one? I'm gonna let you handle that one. <laughs> All right. So uh, with <sighs> John it's really, Deere's it, tough. John Deere, John Deere's tough because yeah. there's so many applications. Right. Um, but I can tell you, can you program John Deere injectors on a Texer or Kajali? Yes. Can you, when you replace a DPF filter on a John Deere, you have to tell it the new serial number mm -hmm. of the DPF filter. Can you do that with Texan Kajali? Yes. yes. So there's a lot that you can do. Where, um, another example, um, dash cluster on a Volvo. There's a little bit of a reprogramming event you have to do in order to replace that dash cluster. Can our, can the, after, the premier aftermarket tools do that? Yes, they can do that. The line in the sand is is really is really drawn at doing that complete ECM flash or software updates. And on that note, I can tell you of the if we send out 10 reprogramming kits to customers because they're adamant they need a software update to fix their truck, uh, eight of them don't it doesn't fix it. Yeah. <laughs> it it's, it's somewhere in that neighborhood. So a lot of times people go right to the ECM thinking that's the problem, I need to flash it or I need to replace it. And that's usually not the problem. There's usually something else going on. Um, so with Texa, can you change road speed on pack car? Um, and is that include in cruise control? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just clarify the comment I made a little bit earlier. There's pack car engines that are 2010 through 2013. And then there's pack car engines that are 2014 to newer. So Stacy, you kind of see this in your department. There's there's ones that we can do and there's the ones that we can't do. Is that correct? Right. You have your MX and your PX. Yeah. So well the the PX, a lot of those are Cummins engines. We got those. The the MX, that 2010 through 13, I can tell you changing road speed on those, I don't think Kajali or Texa can do it yet. Right. But you also cannot do it with Davy 4 either. <laughs> so it's really locked down to the dealer in that situation. I do know, or I'd heard, I haven't actually seen it, the 2014 and newer PX engines, I think those are working and fine now uh, with the cruise speed and max road mm -hmm. speed with Texa. Again, that's something we can go double check with our tech support, but I, I believe all that got resolved you know, nine months ago or, or somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, does truck fault codes have Detroit fault codes and bulletins available? Truck fault codes has every single fault code for every single electronic control module on every truck that, that became electronic. So everything from DDEC2 all the way to the brand new engines, even that new DD5 engine and I think DD8, as those new medium duties, all those fault codes are in there as well. Uh, what we do not have on truck fault codes is the OEM bulletins. You know, they're not giving us permission to include those bulletins right. in our stuff. You know, we don't want to infringe on anyone's copyright. Mm -hmm. um, but I can tell you a lot of that information we build into knowledge base, which is only available when people buy a kit from us. All right, uh, can you program an ECM on a 2012 Mac CXU? Man, I, I knew these questions were gonna get really granular, Very right? Specific. So here, here, here yep. we are. Um, and then I got my favorite question coming up here next as well. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so can we program changes? Yes. Can we program anything that needs to be done, like the, uh, the, the VGT actuator? Yes. Can we flash the entire ECM on a Cummins? No. Um, does that technology exist? Can, could Texan Kajali do that if they wanted to? 
Absolutely. <laughs> Those guys are actually the factory tool for a lot of manufacturers, especially motorcycles, um, off-road stuff. Um, they do direct work with a lot of uh, European uh, companies, automotive manufacturers. So some of that aftermarket software is actually the same software used by dealers at some of these other companies. So they can do it. There's just a line there that some of them aren't wanting to go to yet and kind of open up that can of worms. And then there's a lot of gray area with legality issues if mm. that's legit to do or not. <laughs> so yeah. that that's really the holdback more than the technology side and, and can it be done? And my all-time favorite question, can you delete DPFs on vehicles with any of these tools? Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Stop yeah. it. So here's the thing, guys. Deleting DPFs or even tampering with emission systems is 100% illegal. Mm -hmm. Even if that person is saying, well, I'm signing a piece of paper saying I'm using this for off-highway use, I'm using this for road race use, I'm exporting it to another country, none of that matters at all because the only way to legally do that is to go get the engine recertified by the original equipment manufacturer. All right. So no, none of the tools will do any of the deletes here. Um, deletes are 100% illegal. I totally get why people do them. They have problems. They think it's a solution. I can tell you now with the more newer trucks, 2004 model emission systems, 2007 emission systems, it, it was very, very, very ugly. Even some of the 2010 stuff, that tech has come a long, long way since then. Um, if you're deleting emissions, you're just opening yourself up to liability, to legal concerns. Um, good luck selling that truck or trading it in. Like you're just you're really painting yourself in a corner. Good luck trying to find a, a reputable place to work on it. Um, when it does have a problem, is it because of the emission tampering or is it because I actually have a problem? You're, you're just creating a lot more problems than I think you're really solving, in my opinion. And again, on our blog, I wrote a pretty in-depth one. And if you think, oh, the EPA never goes after the little guy, they only go after the big guys like Volvo and whoever else cheats emissions, totally not true. They have uh, fined and sued multiple, multiple, multiple people that run anywhere from one truck in small shops and resellers, and it's all over the board. The EPA actually publishes on their website a list of all the people they've made settlements with this year. And that's, that's one list you don't want to get your company name on. I can, I can promise you that. So there we go. I think that's it for questions. I know we ran a little bit over our time that we were expecting here. I really appreciate everyone's time. Um, if you need to get a hold of us at Diesel Laptops, uh, very easy to do. Um, simply just call us, 888-983-1975. Um, you can email us, sales at diesel laptops. You can go to diesellaptops.com. If you want to check out, get reviews on us, just literally Google diesel laptops review. I got, I got no problem you guys seeing what's out there on YouTube and what customers are saying and the things we do. Um, our job's not to sell you one tool. Our job is to get you the right tool. I'd rather have you in the right tool and have you a customer for a long time with diesel laptops than pushing you into an expensive tool that I know is overkill for you. I, I didn't do anybody any favors there for any of that. So again, thank you for your time. We're going to call it an episode. Uh, great. I just really appreciate everything. Stacy, how'd we do on our, uh, your first webinar? It was outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, everyone.